How's it going? I'm working on assignment two in ITL 530. We are talking about equitable learning practices. Uh, the prompt gave us two videos to kind of dissect and look at the different levels of teaching TPEs, uh, teaching with including TPEs uh, two and four. And um, we're supposed to compare and contrast those levels and reflect on how we are going to create that equitable learning environment in our own class. So what I found uh, in the first video, there was a seventh grade uh, STEM classroom, science classroom, uh, and the teacher talked in level one. It was more of a traditional type environment. He got up in front of the class and kind of walked them through the reading or whatever material that he was walking through. He didn't really uh, ask for any student feedback. He didn't break them into groups. He didn't allow them to do it on their own. He kind of, he helped them to spell words correctly. He helped them with meanings of the word. And then in level two, he actually had them find the concept behind the, the term. Uh, he gave uh, a visual PowerPoint reference uh, where they had to actually dissect the vocabulary and kind of use the word in context so that they got the dynamics and the understanding behind the meaning. Uh, he gave time for group work. Um, and he gave options. And then to follow that one in the first video, he had them write a fictional narrative. So this gets them to think creatively to include the, the vocabulary that they have kind of broken down so they're able to use it in a, in a sentence. Uh, and then the, the difference here was that there was a time factor. So they had to consider time efficiency and time management when completing a, a task. So the progression here, it, it, it kind of sets them up to have more options. It challenges them more because they have to know the why behind these ideas and these vocab terms. And then it kind of gives them a glimpse in a professional work setting with the time concept or the time element in the, uh, in the level three. Uh, in the second one, we, I believe it was a second grade or first grade class. Uh, and they were, they were using digital, um, a digital means to, you know, teach and learn a lesson in English that had to do with punctuation. So in the first one, again, kind of like level one in the STEM class, there was, there was no opportunity for the students to use any tech. They were basically just following along with the teacher in a very uh, traditional way. Teachers spoke, didn't really ask many questions, didn't ask for any feedback. Uh, didn't touch on any ways to really like edit edit the work. They they just kind of did it from the top down. So it was kind of like a one size fits all type deal. Uh, level two, she read it uh, and then allowed time for them to make their own corrections. She had them come up randomly and, and make corrections with a dry erase marker, which I've done uh, throughout my my younger years in academia. The phys the phys or the aspect of them physically having to go up there and make adjustments was huge, and um, it all they, she also gave them options on how to do this. And then on the third one, they actually got to break out in groups, use technology. They used their Chromebooks. They partnered up. They got to edit each other's work where they could make or they could work on their vocab skills by making adjustments on somebody else's paper and then they they could collaborate together on how to make those adjustments so that's also huge that teammate aspect and the ability to collaborate on issues and come to an agreement is is huge in any line of work so i think you know just getting them for 
getting them prepared for these types of scenarios later on in life, I think is huge. Not just the, the ability to, to have the, the academic output to break down a sentence and make sure it's perfect, but also, you know, the ability to connect with other people and, and manage personalities and manage relationships is huge. So, um, as a teacher, I'd obviously, you know, I, I haven't even student taught yet. I've observed some classes and my future master teacher has done a great job at providing options. You know, it's like giving options instead of orders. You know, you got to find, it's not a one size fits all. You got to find what's best for each individual student. So, you know, when we're doing a, a tennis lesson, you know, maybe a, a student is struggling with movement and needs a smaller tool or a, a, sorry, a smaller racket, you know, or maybe the rules need to be adjusted a little bit. Maybe the ball needs to bounce twice before he or she can re uh, return it back over the net. And maybe some student needs to be challenged. Maybe, uh, maybe the, the two, your two best athletes in the class should, you know, compete against each other, you know, just, you got to find each uh, each scenario has got to be different for each student. And one thing that I've really learned a lot about in this program, especially when it comes to physical education, is the sense that you know after you address the classroom and you see all the ability levels and you connect with the students and know who they are, give them options on how to perform a summative assessment or some type of formative assessment. You know, if, if I don't have, if I'm not working with one of the best athletes in the class, maybe that person is excels in writing or art. Maybe, maybe they can draw a picture of what the understanding needs to be if it's movement related. So if they can't show you physically, maybe they can show you that they understand through literacy skills. Uh, so that's a great one to summarize, like how I would implement this type of, of level of teaching these different TPEs, or I guess showing these, these, uh, expectations in my classroom would to be just that consider all ways that I can strive to make each individual student successful. So that's finding what's right for each one. Um, the tennis, the, the tennis reference, you know, finding if a racket's too heavy, maybe a lighter racket, smaller racket, you know, just tending to the needs of what I see. So just very simply using my vision as a teacher and trying to address everybody so they can all get up to speed on what needs to be taken care of. And, I will always use their their interests, their backgrounds, what they're in into to to not only relate to them, but to help them better accomplish the task at hand. Literacy skills huge. Maybe give uh, create packets. You know, if we're if they need to stand on uh, you know one leg or hop on one leg you know, three times. And then on the third one, they need to jump and land on two feet without, you know, having to, to brace themselves without having to take an extra step or lose balance. If they struggle doing that, maybe create a packet to describe what has to be right in order to accomplish that. Some kids love reading. So if we create some kind of packet, they can read. If we give them the option to draw, to write, to speak, an interview setting's huge, or, you know, they can show physically by doing the act. So just taking all those aspects into consideration and, you know, kind of experimenting with all these ingredients to come up with um, the right combination for each student is what's huge and what I plan to really pay attention to once I do get into my student teaching and once I do start my career as a physical education teacher. 
So thank you very much for listening. Uh, I appreciate any feedback.